you see in uh, your handout, uh, the word Satipatthana is uh, translated as uh, mindfulness and uh, it has been defined as uh, Pali word has been translated directly as uh, oh, placed close or placed near. Upa Thana, Upa is close, like Upo Sata. Uh, nearby. Thana means uh, put or keep or stay. So when you break the words into two, that's the meaning you get. In other words, uh, mindfulness you place, according to this, you place mindfulness very close to you nearby. But upadhana, upasthana has another meaning. As you all know, upasthana is attending. For instance, uh, gilano upasthana in Sanskrit, you attend to the sick. Venerable Ananda is known for his upadhana. He was attendant. Uh, so, upasthana is, uh, you see, in the uh, Putigatta Tissathera's story, Buddha was uh, attending to Putigatta Tissa. Putigatta Tissa means the one uh, monk is unknown monk in uh, Buddhist tradition. Uh, when somebody is not known, not famous, they just call him Tissa. Anybody who, does, who is not known is Tissa. And this particular monk is uh, not very well known, but he was sick. The body was uh, uh, poor, means rotten. I mean, he has such a serious skin disease that the skin uh, rotted and a uh, uh, lot of uh, wounds here and there, maybe like uh, smallpox or chickenpox he was um, suffering from. Anyway, his skin was uh, very uh, much infected. So his body is called Putigatta, rotten body, Tissa, and Buddha attended to him. So there the word upasthana is used for attending. So this is very, I think that meaning is more profound, more uh, appropriate for this particular word. Sati upasthana, mindfulness attends to our every single moment awareness. That means we uh, let the mindfulness attend our needs, our uh, body, feeling, thoughts, and so forth. So Padhana, therefore, means is uh, very uh, ass assisting, supporting, attending to every single moment. Uh, so you can see how deep and subtle uh, that meaning is. At the very beginning, Buddha said there are four uh, foundations of mindfulness, and he uh, enumerated the four as kāye uh, kāya anupasi viharati, one becomes uh, 
mindful of the body, one lives with being mindful of the body or lives uh, seeing the body mindfully. But there are four other words he used. These are extremely important also. They are atapi, sampajano, satima, vinaya loke abhijya domanasam. This gives the entire summary of what we are supposed to do. Atapi is a noun, meaning one who makes effort, one who strives, one who makes fourfold effort is called Atapi, which means one, uh, it's one makes effort to weaken, subdue unwholesome things. One makes effort, fourfold efforts. Remember, one effort is to prevent unarisen, unwholesome states from arising. Second effort is to overcome unwholesome state uh, that is that is already arisen. And the third is an effort to arouse wholesome mental states. And the fourth effort is to maintain, support, sustain all the arisen wholesome states, wholesome thoughts. So the one who is practicing mindfulness has to uh, be very alert first to prevent mindfulness tries to prevent unnerson unwholesome states from arising. Here we have two things effort and mindfulness work together. And these are two states or factors of the Noble Eightfold Path. Right mindfulness, right effort. We are trying to practice mindfulness together with effort. In other words, we make effort to practice mindfulness. As I mentioned yesterday, the third factor also naturally involves, that is, understanding. That is why these three factors are called three cardinal factors of the Noble Eightfold Path. First, we go to understand and then make effort with mindfulness. Or, we make mindful effort to understand. We make mindful effort to understand. This word has all this meaning in it. That is, we make effort with mindfulness to understand unwholesomeness of certain mental states. That is why we try to prevent them from arising. In advance, we must know this particular mental state is unwholesome. We must recognize what is wholesome, what is unwholesome, right? Only then we will be able to stop unwholesome mental states from arising. In order to do that, we have to make an effort. To make that effort, we have to be mindful. If we are not mindful, we might not make any effort. Or, even if we want to be mindful, if we don't make effort, we cannot stop it. See, so, all this work together. Our understanding, effort, mindfulness. Three work together. 
the word atapi means in uh, is uh, uh, weakening uh, effort to weaken subdue suppress or dry or burn all these meanings we find in the word atapi primarily atapi first meaning is effort fourfold effort one who makes fourfold effort is called atapi next word is sampajano that also is a noun one who understands one who knows is sampajano we will discuss sampajana later on there are four types of sampajanas uh, when we come to the third part of the uh, mindfulness of the body uh, we will discuss that then satima satima also is a noun uh satima here is used as a, a masculine gender although it looks like feminine because it refers to bikku bikku is a masculine gender so satima is one who is mindful then uh, you can see the meaning uh, in the third line very clearly i mean in the second line that is why i want to go through this vineya loke abhijja do manasang here loke loke means in the world abhijja is craving do manas is disappointment that means having overcome covetousness and uh anger now here we have right thought covetousness is greed covetousness is uh, wishing that something that belongs to somebody else to be your own you wish such and such should be yours i wish i have that that kind of wish the other day i was walking i heard some young person running around and he saw a beautiful house and he peeped through it and he said oh this is a beautiful house i wish i owned that that kind of thought arises in people's mind wish to own somebody something that belongs to somebody else that's called covetousness that comes from greed desire so when we practice mindfulness that is one of the defilements that we got to subdue how can we subdue that by letting go of our greed don't become uh, obsessed with greed domanasa is disappointment comes from in, um, coming from anger or hatred where in the world so this doesn't mean that we are going to uh, remove the greed and hatred in the world outside over there we cannot do that it will never happen but because of outside things greed can arise in us because of outside things hatred can arise in us so in other words greed and hatred that arise in us we subdue when we practice this we practice subdue that 
or at the very outset we determine not to dwell upon greed and hatred that arise in us. What should we do to stop that? That is why in any meditation, although here it is not given very precisely, very clearly, any meditation uh, uh, guidelines that Buddha has given, the first thing he asks us to do is to practice metta. When you sit and start meditation, you first practice metta. And share your metta with all living beings and send your metta to all ten directions. So that mind will uh, be free from hatred. And then he said, don't think of the past, don't think of the future. Why when you think of the past or the future, you may allow greed to arise. And then, Satima, be mindful. So with that state of mind, we cultivate our mindfulness of the body, in the body. And Vedana also feelings, we mind, practice mindfulness of the feelings and uh, consciousness and mental formations. Now these four foundations of mindfulness deal with five aggregates. Four foundations of mindfulness we cultivate to see, understand the five aggregates clearly. When we become mindfulness of the body, that is one aggregate aggregate of the body or form. When we become mindfulness of feelings, we, be, we deal with the aggregate of feelings. When we become mindful of consciousness, we deal with the aggregate of consciousness. Then when we deal with mindfulness of uh, the Dhamma or mental formations, we deal with the remaining two aggregates like perceptions and thoughts. So the five aggregates are form, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness. Perception and, con perception and thought put together as one uh, group when we practice four foundations of mindfulness. That means fourth foundation of mindfulness is the mindfulness of mental formations, thoughts, which include perceptions as well. So, having given the, the synopsis, the, the brief introdu uh, summary introduction to the whole discourse, would they start giving, uh, start explaining them one by one in detail? And Buddha asked because because how one should practice mindfulness of the body. Then he said, uh, here a bhikkhu goes to a forest, aranyagatova, rukhamulagatova, sunyagaragatova. Buddha always uh, advised us to go to a forest. You came to a forest monastery. So you fulfill one of the requirements. If you couldn't find the forest, go to a cave or a house 
where there are no people. Perhaps these days you can go to uh, your holiday resort. <laughs> Somewhere, you know, where, where there are not a lot of people. Uh, mainly Buddha uh, advised bhikkhus to go and sit under trees. Uh, in the summer, it's a very good place to sit and meditate if there are no too many bugs, mosquitoes, uh, little insects. Otherwise, sitting under a tree would be ideal. Why? Because you breathe, you, you find fresh air, relatively cool, totally open. And so, if you attain jhanas and develop uh, supernatural powers, you can fly without any obstacle. <laughs> so, sitting under a tree is ideal. For but if there is a, a lightning, don't sit under a tree. <laughs> that is very dangerous. <coughs> anyway, uh, then he's, he prescribes a way of sitting. Nisidati phallankanga bhujitva. Pallankanga bhujitva is uh, making uh, your, uh, what do you call, sitting in cross-legged position, uh, lotus posture, unshakable posture, that is sometimes called vajrasana. Vajrasana means uh, diamond posture, the, the, the best of all the postures. However, if you cannot sit in that posture, you may sit in half lotus posture. If that is difficult, you may sit in a, you know, simple, ordinary, relaxed uh, posture. And these days, uh, you may even find uh, little uh, stools to sit on or sit on a chair. Anyway, Ujjungkayang panidhaya, that is another requirement. Keep the body straight in perpendicular position. A perpendicular position also is very important. I have seen actually this, these are very, appear to be very simple, trivial, but all these will add up to the success. If you sit uh, many a time I notice people sit with very good intention, bending here, head down, hunching their back. And that's a very good posture to sleep. <laughs> very quickly you go to sleep. Most of the meditators, although they are very serious, they sleep in meditation. Not they want to do it intentionally, but because of the posture, wrong posture, they fall asleep. Or they have backache, or neck ache, shoulder ache, because of the wrong posture. And therefore, please, when you sit, sit upright. Don't sit, you know, slouching hunching your back, bending your head down. <coughs> Always, whenever you sit, make sure that you do not bend your head down. You definitely fall asleep. Sit, putting your hands on your lap, right on the left, making your straight, back straight. You must feel the straightness right on the top of your head. When you sit in a perpendicular position, you feel 
the straightness. You can maintain it and you may not fall asleep. If you fall asleep, you immediately wake up. Buddha, I mean Buddha and all the ancient uh, uh, successful uh, meditation masters, rishis, sages, mendicants, have told us to sit straight from their own experience. He knew what can happen when, we, when the body is not straight to avoid sleepiness. Secondly, when you sit in upright position, you know, making your chest uh, you know, straight, you know, back straight, you can breathe very easily, comfortably. Your chest expands, contract easily. Uh, it may sound sometimes uh, uh, making the body stiff. We are not making the body stiff, but you simply make the body straight. This Buddha has mentioned invariably, everywhere he mentions, uh, he gave instructions on meditation, he has mentioned this. In sitting in the cross-legged position or and making the body straight. And he never recommended, even when you sit under a tree, to lean against the tree. That is another lazy posture. You definitely fall asleep. You feel comfortable. And that comfort has a danger in it. <laughs> Don't take uh, offense when I say this. Sometimes uh, some of you like to say, <laughs> lean against. I have seen some people always find walls. <laughs> Whenever they go somewhere, they always find a wall. Uh, <laughs> not only meditation, even for simple ordinary sitting. You know, we, have, we can adjust our posture, we can make the body strong. If we keep uh, maintaining our posture in a, a steady way, we can strengthen the back. So, Ujjunkayam Panidhaya, then he said, Parimukhaṁ satiṁ upārta pettva. Parimukhaṁ satiṁ, uh, translated as the keeping the mind in front. So keeping mindfulness in front. Uh, before him, in the translation, uh, establishing mindfulness before him. Now this is confusing a statement. How can you establish mindfulness before you? as opposed to behind you, or you are sideways. How can you put mindfulness before you? Parimukha should be understood, of course, literally it means in front. But in, 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 in practice, it is not putting in front or behind or side or on your side. Parimukha is keeping the mind not in a, a geographical place, but temporal place. That is, put it in the present moment, in time before you, not in space before you. It is not the spatial statement. Parimukha means temporal statement, time a statement. That is, keep the mind in this very present moment. Because things are happening not in front or behind in space, but things are happening in the moment, present moment. So mindfulness is the is the 
practice of becoming aware of what is happening in the moment, not in the place. That means things are happening every given moment something is happening. It can happen on the shoulder, it can happen on the top of the head, at the, the tip of the nose or somewhere. Or the tip of your toe. And the breath then keeping the mind in the present moment, breathe in and breathe out. So the breath goes in and out in the present moment. We are trying to become aware of the, more, the breath that is happening going on now. Not one second past breath or one second previous, um, uh, future breath. But the breath that is happening that we experience every current single present moment. If you try that, you will see how quickly you can gain awareness with the breath. So my uh, suggestion to you all is to keep the mind in this present moment. You hear mindfulness is a moment to moment awareness. If it is moment to moment awareness, then we go to start with the current moment. This moment, to the next moment, to the next moment, to the next moment, and so forth. Then, the other word is a very important word, sato vasasati. Sato vapasasati. <laughs> Sato va, there's a va. Uh, they have put uh, apostrophe before v, that is uh, uh, that's not correct. There should not be apostrophe. If you put apostrophe, it means either sato iwa or sato ewa. This is a part of the uh, emphasis. Va is here to emphasize exclusively with mindfulness. Sato va. Uh, we, it is easy to say, in Sinhalese we say, Sihi yen ma. You see? Sihi yen ma. That means, we, we don't take the mind away even from one second. You do, you breathe uh, exclusively with mindfulness. In order to emphasize the mindfulness, where is used here. That means you don't uh, become unmindful even for one second, one moment. Then, if you breathe in, you breathe with mindfulness, only with mindfulness you breathe in and only with mindfulness you breathe out to show that uh, uh, emphasis is even a word is used, sato va. Asya sati, sato va, pasya sati. Then, if you breathe, if the breath happens to be long, you become mindful of that. 
without making any special effort to make the breath long. If the breath happens to be long, that is why wa is used here. Digang wa asasanto. Digang asasamiti pajanati. Only if the breath is long and become mindful of the fact that it is long. If the breath is digang asan, digang asan. Asa samiti pajanati. Now, uh, we don't say, I breathe long, I breathe uh, uh, short, or oh, I breathe in long, I breathe out long. We don't say that. We don't use these sentences. But when we train ourselves to be mindful, we become aware of the long breath as long breath, long inhaling as long inhaling, long exhaling as long exhaling, as it happens to the breath. That means when, the, when there is long inhaling, we become aware, this is long inhaling. When we have long exhaling, we become aware of the fact that this is long exhaling. So don't use word or sentence to become aware of the length of the breath. <coughs> or inhale or exhale. <coughs> Pajanati means knows. He knows this is long inhaling. He knows this is long exhaling. Rasangvasa santu rasangvasamit pajanati. If the breath happens to be short while inhaling, we become aware of that it is short inhaling and when it is short exhaling we become aware of that it is short exhaling. And then since we start breathing in with mindfulness this is why we say Sabbakaya Patisangvedi knowing the entire breath body. This morning I mentioned in my uh, guided meditation instruction that uh, uh, with awareness we begin inhaling and let the awareness flow with inhaling, when inhaling comes to middle, awareness remains in the middle, when inhaling comes to an end, awareness comes to an end, when there is a pause, there is an awareness of the pause, when exhaling begins, there is an awareness of the beginning. When awareness, when the exhaling comes to the middle, there is an awareness of the, in the middle of exhaling. When the breath comes to an end, exhaling comes to an end, awareness remains with the end of exhaling. So awareness flows with the breath. Awareness flows with the beginning of inhaling, middle of inhaling, end of inhaling, pause, beginning of exhaling, 
middle of exhaling, end of exhaling. So, awareness also goes simultaneously with the breath. The whole complete cycle. So, in order to emphasize that Satova Asasati Buddha says, Satova Pasasati. That is, uh, two things going on at the same time. What are the two things? <coughs> Breath is going on, awareness also is going on along with the breath. These two things should not be separated. Breath and awareness must be united, function simultaneously, going in and out. You see, these two things must be together. And that is why it is said, Sabba Kaya Pati Sangvedi Asa Sissami Sikhati, Sabba Kaya Pati Sangvedi Pati Sissami Sikhati. Knowing this entire breathing process, we breathe in and we breathe out. That is, mindfulness or awareness of the beginning, middle and end of inhaling and exhaling. So, mindfulness always you know, flows with the entire breathing process. That is called sabbakaya, knowing this entire breathing process, becoming mindful of entire breathing process, with awareness of entire breathing process, we breathe in and breathe out. <coughs> then, what happens? Pasambhayankaya Sankharang, the what is Kaya Sankara is breathing, breathing process. Inhaling and exhaling is called Kaya Sankara. Kaya Sankara means uh, body conditioner. The breath conditions the body. Breath itself is the body and that is a subtle body. This subtle body conditions the gross body. You know, <coughs> as we all know, when the breath, of course, breath conditions in breath conditions the body in many ways, bringing oxygen into the body. <laughs> it definitely conditions the body. Without oxygen, this body will not survive. That is the primary condition. Depending on the amount of oxygen we take in, in a bodily functions go on. If the oxygen can, that we bring in is a very small amount, then we have problems. That is why when we, you know, go uh, climbing in high elevations, oxygen is thin and we cannot bring, uh, breathe a lot of oxygen, then we feel tired. Our lungs become very, sometimes people even um, uh, become uh, unconscious because of the lack of oxygen. So, the breath conditions this body. And more oxygen we get, the better for the brain, circulation, lungs, heart and so forth. And quicker we breathe, uh, tired we, we get or uh, we may get more oxygen. And slow we breathe, we strengthen our lungs. We can hold breath longer. Uh, so, every tiny little cell, trillions of cells in our body are conditioned by breathing. Therefore, this is called 
body condition kai sankara and as you uh, when the breath becomes calm and relaxed that makes the gross body calm and relaxed so if we mindfully breathe you know most of the time we breathe unmindfully therefore a uh, lot of discomfort we experience but if we breathe mindfully slowly letting lot of breath oxygen go into the breath into the lungs body becomes calm the, this gross body becomes calm and the breath also slowly becomes calm we don't have to do anything special to make the body breath body calm we just breathe mindfully slowly without getting agitated excited uh paying attention we breathe in so buddha said knowing patisang vedi for some bhayan kaya sankara uh relaxing the body breath body that means when we breathe calmly slowly mindfully breath becomes relaxed and knowing that we breathe in and breathe out asasi samiti sikkati the word is changed here uh from pajanati uh, to sikkati uh first two pairs are pajanati uh, last two pairs are sikkati pajanati is knowing sikkati means training disciplining sikkha we say sikkha padang samadhyami there sikkha means discipline training so we train the mind train the body to know the entire breathing process in the second third pair we see we train the mind to see the entire breathing process that is when we remain mindful from the beginning of each inhaling till the end of it and the beginning of each exhaling till the end of it we discipline our mind discipline our mind to see the entire breathing process similarly when we breathe mindfully slowly we discipline ourselves to calm the body calm the breath and knowing uh, this we breathe in and out pasambhaya kansangara asi samiti sikkhati we discipline ourselves discipline now the breath is calm it is so uh natural from this example the simile that buddha gave here we can see how natural it is simile is seyata api bikkeve dakko bhamakaro va bhamakarante va seva digang vanchantu digang anchamiti pajanati rasang vanchantu rasang anchamiti pajanati just like uh, bhamakara uh, is uh, uh turn uh, what do we mean by turn <coughs> you know uh, these days you don't see turners very many turners 
because everything is automatic. When you uh, uh, the carpenter uh, has uh, oh, what do you call that? Uh, he uses uh, chisel, lathe, huh? lathe, yes. So he has a wheel, which is connected to uh, uh, connected to the, the the turning point with the rope. So here is a man who is turning it. So the uh, his assistant or he himself will turn it by hand to do the lathe using the chisel, making all these designs. So if we want to turn it uh, 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 long, uh, oh, what what you call? Uh, uh, do it uh, for a long period of time, he will turn it uh, uh, slowly and long. If he want to do it very quick, he will turn it very quickly. Uh, so he, either the carpenter himself or his assistant turn the wheel. That is called that person who turns the wheel is called turner. So when you want to make a long turn, not long U-turn in your vehicle, <laughs> that is the <laughs> turn perhaps we be quite familiar. This is a carpenter's turn. He turns it s slowly and long. Similarly, when you breathe in long, when the breath goes long, you simply become aware of that. The turner is uh, one who uses the wheel. The breath is going in a cycle. The beginning, middle and end of inhaling, beginning, middle and end of exhaling, that goes in cycle. So, you Buddha used the cycle to show the cyclical repetition of the breath. It is not linear uh, long, it is a circular long, turning on the wheel. So, uh, since it happens naturally, the meditator must be mindful of the, uh, the breath once it began, whether it is inhaling or exhaling, you start the beginning point and then stay with that until it comes to an end and the next uh, part begins. That means you start with the inhaling and when it comes to end, it connects with the exhaling and it comes to an end. Then it uh, end as soon as it ends, inhaling begins. So inhaling and exhaling are connected. They are not separated. Although there is a pause, that pause is not a vain pause or empty pause. What is in that pause? It's your mindfulness. Your awareness. So your awareness is running, flowing without any break. The breath may have a pause at the in the at the end of inhaling and at the end of exhaling. There may be a tiny little pause, but the mindfulness does not pause. Mindfulness flows, or mindfulness does not break. Mindfulness. St stays there to know, to become aware of the pause and the beginning. So, the simile is a very powerful, very vivid simile. That means to show the continuity of mindfulness, awareness. If it is a linear uh, distance, 
then you may go to one end and then pause and return. There is no connection. But here, he wants to show the connection, uh, the completeness. You know, wheel always is used to used to show the perfection, completeness. So, mindfulness must remain always running, even when the breath is paused. The mindfulness must become aware of the pause and become aware of the beginning of the next breath, inhaling or exhaling. So, then he repeated the same thing again, same for uh, pairs. <coughs> if you uh, are familiar with the for uh, what you call Anapana Sati Sutta, uh, there are uh, 16 uh, uh, pairs divided into four uh, tetrads. But only one tetrad, or one, uh, what you call, four pairs are given here in this discourse. Uh, because this is uh, more uh, complex, uh, detailed uh, explanation of mindfulness training. I think this may be enough for today. We will continue the next uh, with the next uh, section of the mindfulness of the body tomorrow. <coughs>